Hi, um, this is Mike Merberg, and uh, I've been asked to uh, memorialize uh, an event that occurred back uh, about a week or two ago uh, on June 16th, 2018. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have a uh, CE5 group that got together here out in uh, West Central Florida, and uh, we did a uh, co-CE5 with uh, Buddy Bolton's group uh, out of uh, Southern New York State in the Hudson River Valley and uh, I'll kind of go through uh, what happened. I've got some illustrations here that may be helpful um, so uh, here goes. Uh, Buddy and I had uh, gotten together uh, by way of uh, Grant uh, Cameron's uh, podcast and uh, we decided to uh, have a commingled uh, CE5 uh, where uh, Buddy's group was remotely uh, stationed in uh, the Hudson River Valley and ours was uh, at my uh, small ranch uh, in uh, Pasco County, Florida. Uh, and I'll read from you the, the, the text. Buddy and I had decided that we'd uh, get our groups together at about 8.30 uh, in the evening. Things ran a little bit behind schedule. We didn't get out to the field till about 9 o'clock. Uh, I called Buddy uh, ahead of time, let him know there was a, an issue. And then at 9.05, our group got together uh, to do our uh, outside invocation uh, of uh, love and light and, sub up and send up our uh, group projection. Uh, at the same time, uh, Buddy was engaging his group to do a remote uh, view and uh, kind of a remote check-in. At uh, 9.07, I texted Buddy, and uh, Buddy's words were, We just did a 10-minute on your location and others <coughs> still. I'm going back in, focusing on y'all. Oh, by the way, someone... I later learned this was Buddy, uh, wrote down 10.15 p.m. And that, and that you should see something really cool around then. Much love, Buddy. Uh, I, uh, namaste. Uh, going back to my notes, um, uh, one of our group members, Lou Angel Wolf, also a, uh, a stand-up comedian. I don't know if there's something in the universe that unites uh, stand-ups, but it seems that um, Buddy, I, and Lou have something in common. Um, Lou and Buddy more stand up than I. I was a total failure at it, so. Um, but it did come in handy later on. Um, and needless to say, at 9.05, between 9.05 and 10 o'clock, we had uh, photographs of uh, a lot of small specks of light on our digital camera. Uh, my first thought was uh, that they were pollen or light or dust, but it had been raining all day and it was unlikely that it was pollen or dust. Uh, orbs, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was a natural phenomenon, but uh, like uh, Occam's Razor says, you know, when you hear hoof, hoof, hoof boots, I uh, think horses, not zebras, so I'm still thinking horses on that one until something else comes around. Um, at 9.42, we heard owls nearby, and now uh, this is kind of uncanny because owls can be harbingers of initiation for uh, for uh, ET. I don't know how it works, but they end up showing up, and then we um, inevitably have uh, ET occurrences uh, shortly thereafter or just shortly before. At uh, so at 9:42, we heard the owls. At 9:47. Um, we all spotted a craft moving through the sky. Uh, there were multiple uh, flash bulbs uh, that it gave us uh, north of the Star Vega. Uh, I returned its flash on three different occasions with a, a green laser that I have and uh, used very carefully and very sparingly. Um, it was a, a high, dark, fast walker. It flashed back uh, in reply to uh, my uh, signals to it. And then it moved uh, north to south and then uh, out of our range. At 9.57, I began to check the time on my uh, phone. <coughs> Excuse me. I was wondering if Buddy had been right or not. Um, at about the same time, uh, we saw a bunch of distant flash bulbs. Um, they began to appear way, way up. I was guessing 65,000 feet or better. Um, and they were... Uh, slightly to the east of being directly overhead. At 10.05, uh, 
um, a relatively nondescript and medium-sized uh, orb showed up uh, out of nowhere at what I would guess to be about uh, 250 to 400 yards uh, up and uh, away slightly to the southeast uh, of where we were. Now, uh, we have some members in our group that are uh, MUFON members, and uh, one of the members of the group did, uh, the photograph doesn't show very well. Um, you can kind of see it behind me here on, the, uh, on my computer screen. Uh, but uh, the, the craft, there was a craft that did show up. Um, I did a printout of uh, what we saw. The printout's not very good, but you can see it. Um, that was it. That's the culprit. That craft showed up, uh, and then it um, uh, gave us uh, uh, notice of its presence. And then it um, gave a uh, very uh, gigantic, what I would call a plasma burst. It was more than um, uh, just kind of a, a, a power up. Uh, the burst was very intense um, and it lasted uh, from between three to 10 seconds. Um, it en engulfed us all, it was very, very bright. It brought tears to one of the uh, members of our crew. Um, it was just r really inspiring. Um, and it's uh, it's up there and you know one of my favorite uh, CE5 occurrences um, we uh, the, the camera that we had had infrared capabilities and the the uh, the power up or the plasma burst or the Nova however you want to call it um, did produce this um, photograph on uh, one of our members cameras so as you can see um, that's what it did. That's what it'll do to um, an infrared camera, and that's what it did to ours. So uh, the first blast was uh, was quite beautiful and inspiring. Um, the uh, there was a second blast that occurred, which was uh, a little bit longer than that. Um, I uh, it was uh, 10:05 uh, to 10:07 on my watch. Uh, that the um, that occurrences took place. Uh, I'm sorry, on the iPhone, uh, and I was kind of chuckling that um, you know we, we had an occurrence and you know Buddy had uh, was was off on his timing, but then again I looked down at my watch and saw that uh, what uh, I have was uh, appointment time. I always set my watch a little bit ahead, so it was exactly 10:15 on my watch. So. Uh, that in and of itself was um, a bit of astonishing. Uh, at the 10.05 occurrence when the uh, orb appeared, there was also a shooting star in the background. And um, uh, If I haven't already, I'll, I'll send Buddy the photograph to spread around. Um, it, it's actually quite a, a good one and quite beautiful. Um, let's see. I texted Buddy after it happened and uh, let him know that my watch was 10 minutes ahead so his antenna, uh, whoever he w I thought was using in the group, was, uh, was tuned into my watch. Uh, he uh, admitted that, uh, well, it was actually me. Um, so, uh, so he was the one. He called it uh, at between 10.10 and 10.15. We had some more flash bulbs occur. Once again, um, uh, very much smaller and far more distant than the, uh, than the craft or the entity that showed above us and, and, uh, and gave us such a nice, uh, a nice show and a nice uh, response and um, general feeling of, of love. And then at 10.31, uh, something very strange happened. Uh, we had uh, twin sh uh, ships show up. And they began cavorting, uh, cavorting uh, with each other. They, would, they did a circular dance. Uh, I myself only caught the tail end of it, but four members of my group, the new ones, uh, saw it very well. And, and I'll bring up the diagrams in just a minute. Um, so uh, after our CE5 events, uh, we bring people inside to record um, what they, while it's still fresh in their memories and their recollections, what they saw, what they heard, and what their experiences were. And that goes into the, uh, the official log of the ranch. Um, at 1037, we had a streamer or a bolide, a bolide's a, a, a large um, meteorite, uh, easily identifiable. And I believe this one was a bolide and, and not a, a streamer. It had a sparkly end to it and, um, you know, and it was pretty high up in the sky. So. Um, 
I kind of wrote that one off as a bowl lied. And then at 1139, we had actually had a streamer come through, uh, traveled straight through the constellation or some major um, from southeast to northwest. Um, then again, a little after midnight, about 25 minutes after midnight, we had a, a smaller uh, craft stream through beneath the clouds, which is a pretty good indicator of what you got going on. Uh, if it's a meteorite, it'll usually, you know, further up in the uh, atmosphere, and there'll be a, an arc or a curve, or uh, many times you can see a, a change in the coloration from uh, white to uh, red as it burns out. Uh, and um, and that's pretty much uh, was it for the night. Now, uh, when I had my uh, group come inside, uh, the member of the group who um, I asked to draw what she saw came up with um, this, which uh, is interesting in and of itself um, uh, at what these ships did. But what really became astounding about this and really um, hooked me into the telepathic nature of, uh, of remote viewing and what can be accomplished between uh, CE5 groups that do this and even though they can't share their physical um, habitus or existence or space, uh, they can do this uh, remotely. Now I'm going to show you what, uh, what Buddy sent me, which are his notes, um, and they're uh, r really, you know, rather remarkable. So let me... Uh, bring up my low-tech stuff here uh, these are buddy's notes all right now as you can see um, he did a great job of uh, and I'll put them side to side here so you can see um, my, my friend was really on target with uh, what was going on that night this is Gina's and this is buddy's okay now buddy is you know we've known each other for a couple weeks he'd never been to my place um, you know, and I've never described it to him, and he, uh, things that you really can't see from uh, Google Earth, but, um, but he got the uh, time right, 10.15ish, uh, he got the circular motion of the uh, dancing uh, craft uh, correct, and uh, little notes to Buddy at the time, there's a, uh, there's a couple of trees that he did in his uh, landscape uh, picture of where we do our CE5. Now, um, even though it's, uh, the field is surrounded by large oaks, there are two large oaks on a prominence in the middle of it that really mark the field out for, um, it, it's, it's a prominent, uh, uh, prominent uh, factor in the, uh, in the topography of the field. So he even got the two trees right. So I am uh, doing this to record the happening and with the recommendation and the encouragement that uh, groups that are not already um, uh, dealing with um, uh, focusing in and uh, trying to do uh, off-site um, commingling or uh, group uh, CE5 encounters that they um, that they uh, get busy with their remote viewing and um, find a good antenna. Um, and buddy, uh, I'm going to set my watch back to normal time next time we do this together. So uh, I'm going to keep on trying to fool you. Um, <laughs> so uh, once again, thanks for uh, listening. And I hope this video does some good. Uh, get out there, you know, find your peace and find your quiet and find your CE5 group and start connecting up with the um, the celestial entities and beings of the universe. Uh, they love us. They'll find us. They'll find you. Um, it's best to do this in a group. Um, many, many times you'll see things and you won't believe what you're seeing unless there are other people around to, to take notice. Um, it's nice to have a photographer around. You know, we're blessed with the people that, uh, that we have in our group. Um, and uh, I've never met a finer and more peaceful and loving group of people in my entire life. So, um, you know, the, the Tao provides and God bless and hopefully we'll see you out there under the stars. Bye for now.